Okay, so I wanted to hurry up and get this done. I almost overslept. So, <laughs> so let me do this. Okay, these are the, the same re reverse, 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 reverse. <laughs> reversible questions. Um, how did I feel when I was told that I was moving actually from New York to Cleveland and vice versa, you know, from my home, you know, I had to reverse it to cater these questions to me as opposed to saying, how did I feel when I moved from Compton? Um, how did I feel when I moved from, um, from New York to Cleveland? That was the first time that I moved from anywhere. My stepfather took me and my mother and my sister out of New York, which I now know that it was beneficial for us, but um, how did I feel with it? I, I didn't think nothing of it. I don't think I had a problem with it at all. You know, I was uh, probably eight years old, eight or nine years old, the first time I moved, and probably a little, maybe eight, not even that. I think I was nine, nine or 10, actually, when I moved. Um, I had no problem with, Moving, um, what I did. Oh, messed up one of my favorite shirts when I shaved with blood. Uh, <laughs> I'm upset about that. <laughs> but I, I don't have a problem with, um, with moving the first time. I think what I had a problem with was moving... The second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, the tenth time. I moved around from Cleveland to New York to Puerto Rico, to Puerto Rico, to back to Cleveland, to New York. I moved around so much through my childhood because I thought that I was letting go of friends. And the truth is, um, I wasn't because, you know, this was worldly people. They weren't my friends, but as a child, you don't know that. So... Um, that kind of bothered me. I always felt like, I, especially in Cleveland, where it was a, I experienced a lot of things for the first time, the first friendship. Um, a place that I actually loved being at. I loved Ohio. I still do, and um, probably the only place on earth that I can say that I actually really loved it. It's not New York. Everybody says I love New York, yet yeah, not for me. New York is not love new york is a prison is a financial prison you're stuck in a hole in the wall for a small amount of money so whatever but that's beside the point the truth is um i hated moving from cleveland i didn't mind moving from puerto rico even though i thought puerto rico was beautiful i didn't mind moving from new york even though my family was here because cleveland you know somehow it's substituted for all that um but I'm going to tell you one thing, it did good for me. It built in me an ability that most people find it weird, but it's not weird. My mother and my stepfather moving me around year after year after year after year, what it developed in me it was the ability to let go. I have no problem severing any relationship from my life. I have no problem walking away from someone I have no problem not seeing a person ever again. I really don't. And that's, I guess it's a bad thing. I don't think it's a good thing. I see other people who they, they have these bonds where they feel that, oh, I don't want to be away from that person. Oh, I want to communicate. Oh, I want a phone call. Oh, I want a letter. Oh, I want something from a person. And that's not me. If a person is not a part of my life, well... And that hasn't fully been tested because that the ultimate test would be my children, which I don't want to separate from them. But um, I have a, I, I would say unique because a unique ability because I see the way people respond to relationships. And with me, I have no problem letting go. I have no problem severing. And I think that's because my mother and my stepfather, they moved me around so much that I was always, as a child, I felt so hurt. Oh, I don't want to let go. Oh, I don't want to, <laughs> you know? Um, I remember one of my best friends in Cleveland, his name is Gabriel Gonzalez. Every time I moved away from him, which I considered him my best friend, 
for a long, many years. Every time I moved away from him, it was, it was like ripping me in pieces. So after some time after that, it was like, whatever, man. If that's, you know, after that, it's no big deal. So I think that's what it developed. But that's, that's what I hated. That was one. I'm sorry. I, I drew that out for so long. <laughs> Number two. Uh, well, obviously, I can't answer number two. <laughs> number three, how does it feel that I'm loved and accepted by you? And it's good. It's it's a it's an outstanding feeling. Um, I've seen many, and I've also been in those situations where I I've seen. Uh, well, not really, not me, but I've seen um, persons who've given, they, 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 let me see if I can think of an example. Um, oh, I got a perfect example. I grew up with a best friend named Leo, and um, he had a crush on another best friend of mine named Kathy for, for the longest of times. And this, he, he's a handsome dude. If you see Leo, like he can, he's nothing to sneeze at, you know? <laughs> he can get any girl he wants, I think. He's a very handsome dude, you know? Um, and very intelligent. That's one thing that most people don't, I don't think they see when they see him. He's like outstandingly intelligent. And, um, but he had this crush on my friend and she was a mutual friend of ours. She was real cool and, She's been my friend for years since we were little kids and her and her family. Her name's Kathy. And um, he would, he, he loved this guy. I mean, like the way he would write poetry, this, and this is her response. No, nope, don't worry. Forget about it. Like she paid him no mind. <laughs> and then me and me and my cousin Jason, she actually had a crush on my cousin Jason at one point, but um, she, she gave him no place. So, it, it's it's weird to see when someone loves someone so much and they're not being given that it's not being reciprocated or it's not it's not being shown back in the equal amount which I don't know if anybody ever gives equal exact at all times but you know um, so to answer that question it, it 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 means the world that when I feel this way about someone someone you feel it right back and. It's awesome, you know? I consider you the top of the food chain, as I mentioned it before. And um, <laughs> it's an amazing feeling, you know? Let me, in, let me leave that with that right there. Name three things that I never want to hear out your mouth. There's <laughs> a lot of things I don't want to hear out your mouth. <laughs> um... Uh, yeah. Obvious, I mean, the most obvious is I hate you. <laughs> but then that, that, to say, to come to that extent, to, to say I hate you would actually be a result in what I'm doing. So it's not like you would just have to be a cold fish to say I hate you and me just be perfect. You understand? That doesn't happen. So saying I hate you to someone is a, is a result on what the person is doing most of the time unless a person is just completely cold and crazy. So I don't think that I, I, my hearing I hate you would depend on my actions. That's what I'm trying to say. So I don't, I don't think I'm ever going to um, invoke those type of feelings in you. Um, make sure the volume is up. <laughs> this would have been for nothing. <laughs> um, I hate you. Um, one thing I experienced that I never want to hear, definitely, which I'm sure you, you gave me the same answer, is that um, I know that I'm never going to hear that I hate Jehovah from you. I know that. But what I never want to hear from you is I hate Jehovah's organization. And I'll tell you why. Because I experienced that. There was a, a friend of mine, and I'm not going to say his name because I still have hope for him. But I have a friend. And God forbid he ever sees this in video one day and he feels 
a certain way about it. I never want him to feel that way. I still care for him and I want him to come back. And I still think that with time, you never know how people turn around, you know? But I have a friend and his wife who they said I hate the organization or something to that extent. And I they even trying to convince me, which is, you know, apostasy or borderline apostasy. I don't know. So it hurt me to hear him say that because there's so many experiences biblically and in modern times literature that shows how God himself feels about someone who opposes the organization. Not someone who has a weakness, not someone who's going through something, working on something. That's completely different. It's different when you're struggling with something and you have a, something you're dealing with and it's hard, but it's a bigger difference when you outright just oppose the truth. Oh, no, they're garbage. Oh, no, they're trash. That scares me because I remember how I felt when I heard him say that and it broke my heart that day. So him and his wife speak like that. So I don't ever want to hear that from you. That's a scary thing. Um, I guess another thing would be infidelity, that I cheated or something. That, that would break my heart. So um, that's it. I get those three things. What makes me love you, you know, um, I can't exactly answer this, um, ask it the same way, but what makes me love you, um, number of things, personality wise, um, just being a dude, like just hanging out like a dude, like, I, you're not a real dude, let me just clear that up before people want to this, whoever see this video think I'm, you know, practice homosexuality or something, I don't. So, um, but just being as a dude, someone who I can just joke around, sit back with, be myself, no pretenses, no, no nothing like that, certain, you know, that, is it, uh, I remember there was an episode of Seinfeld where George had to collide worlds um, where he felt that he couldn't bring a certain group of friends around or a certain other group of friends. That's relevant to what I'm trying to say. I feel like I could bring you in any set, um, setting, circumstances, and it's just, I'm just cool. I, you know, it's like you fit in anywhere. You're the peg that conforms to any situation, and that's what's so cool about you. You're a chameleon, and I told you that before, and that feels awesome, that you have beautiful female but at the same time you could just be a dude and just hang out <laughs> I don't know if that sounds offensive if Jehovah would spend the day with me how would I spend that day with him and what's one question I would ask him um let me close this for a second um how would I spend that day um I can't even answer that. In pure shame, um, listening, being educated, not talking much, just trying to spoon feed. Um, because the education that would be ridiculous as it already is, and he's not even physically in the vicinity around us. But um, meaning through his scriptures and stuff like that. What's one, I mean, I would just kiss his feet, keep my face prostrated to the ground, clean my house, make a meal for him, talk about his son. I would want to see him express himself a lot about his son. And the one question I would ask him is, what does he look like in his actual form? And could I even comprehend it? You understand? When Jesus was baptized, he was given that knowledge of it his memory given back so he knew what his father looked like even in spiritual form he could comprehend it as a perfect man so i would love to know what's jehovah frame face what i don't even know if i could say face because it's a spirit creature but a person but um i would just love to know those things you know without being offensive um what fears me most about this system's end um just making sure that everybody I love makes it. My children, getting them on that side, making sure they love Jehovah according to um, 3 John chapter 4. I love that scripture when it pertains to my children. Um, 
just making sure that they love Jehovah and that no matter what, they don't bug out mentally with half the stuff they see at the Great Tribulation when the United Nations attacks false religion. You know, um, that's, I would want them to know that even if I should die, stick to Jehovah because I have a feeling I might. So who knows? Does it make me happy that I, that I, does it make you, does it? You say, I got to conform this to me. Yeah, it makes me very happy that you would want me as a husband or that you would find me um, suitable to be a husband. It makes me very happy. Um, you know, it always feels good when someone is wanted, you know, by another person. Um, what about you? <laughs> I can't answer that. You see, that? that's... Uh, <laughs> I'll explain it in a, in a little while. What's my favorite subject to preach about would be the kingdom, plain and simple. I love the resurrection. I love, um, according to uh, um, John, I believe it's uh, 5, 28 and 29, Acts chapter 14, verse 15. I mean, sorry, 2415. I well, I love the resurrection. I love um, speaking of the new system when it comes to Psalms 3729, Psalms 3710, Matthew 5, 5, um, Proverbs chapter 2, verse 21 and 22. I love talking about um, the distinction between Jehovah and Christ with John 638. I love um, I love the truth. I have my I'm a stupid individual. I make a lot of big mistakes, but I do love the truth. Jehovah knows in my heart that's one thing that nobody can say bad about. I do love the truth. It's just I'm an idiot, plain and simple, I, you know. But I do love the truth. Um, I love talking about the truth to people. Anybody who's known me in my life, anybody can vouch for me that I like talking about Jehovah. I love the Bible. I love what it says, even though sometimes I'm not living according to the standards, but I'm not stupid enough to ignore the fact of what 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 10, what it says about do not be misled, neither fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, men who lie with men, thieves, revilers, drunkards, extortioners will inherit God's kingdom. I love the scriptures, even if I'm not living towards it. So I'm not being a hypocrite. I am stupid a lot of the times, but I do love the scriptures. Um, but I do love speaking about the kingdom, specifically the kingdom, the government that Jehovah himself will bring through by means of his son to intervene in mankind's affairs at Armageddon to bring about Jehovah's will on a planet that is completely godless and against his will. I love speaking about the kingdom that no human government could bring about and has tried for a long time and no human government could bring about what Jehovah and Christ can only do. And it's easy for Jehovah, to, if you want to be frank. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, if you were to die, would I wait in the resurrection? Absolutely. If I'm really committed, there's certain factors that come into play in the big picture of it all, but absolutely. If I'm 100%, then yes. Um, I don't have a problem with time. I have a problem with personalities. That's what I'll, I'll say. I have a problem with personality. I don't have a problem with time. I have a problem with personalities. Personalities bother me on this planet, but I'll explain that another time. This, I can't ask whether I would watch Avatar or Pride and Prejudice because <laughs> I actually love those movies and I think you would too. Pride and Prejudice is a good movie to me. I love that movie. Avatar is probably one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, I think James Cameron did an outstanding job. I'm looking forward to the next three movies that I heard he has in, or two or three movies that he has in store, especially with the bad guy coming back. Um, I'm a fan of that girl. The one who played Nateri, I forgot her name in real life. Um, Cruz or something, I forgot her name. Watch that movie, and I'll get back to you.